Hello my soccer universe. Well, Austria is back in lockdown. At least the schools are open. So, <laughs> But yeah, Austria is back in lockdown. So the past round that we had in Austria is the last one before, uh, you know, the winter break where we had spectators and it was kind of a last hooray with two standard results, one of which unfortunately involved Lusk where everything looked so great and then yeah, it was kind of the ghost of Istanbul in 2005, a game that I still <laughs> deny ever happening. Uh, it was not as, yeah, it was dramatic, but you know, I will talk about that. In Germany though, the big story definitely was that Bayern is losing and letting Dortmund a little bit back in. That is until they probably meet uh, at the Westfalen Stadion uh, in a few uh, rounds from now. And honestly, uh, if Dortmund keep defending like they are defending, it's gonna be a rout in Dortmund. That's uh, at least the feeling that I have. I'm wearing Frankfurt because Frankfurt had a pretty big win, an awkward win, but a big win. But as I said, let's start in Austria, where uh, you see already of my four teams, the one that has the best result is Rapid, with a 1-0 win over Alta, who are in last place, with a game in hand, but last place nonetheless. Um, so yeah, uh, they also fired their coach, uh, I didn't mention that, they fired their coach, Didi Kuba, just uh, during, during the international break, so uh, they're under new management as well. That came a little bit surprising to me, to be honest, because Cuba is such a rapid legend, and now I don't have so much to hate <laughs> about him, because he's one of those uh, coaches, uh, you know, there is slight sympathy for me for him, because he's so identified with this club, although he was not a cl one club man, uh, but then the way he acts, and, and, and uh, you know, if anybody else is just getting, he's getting under your skin. And yeah, in a way, I never thought he's the perfect coach for Rapid, but he should be a part of the club in many, many ways. So they win 1 0. Salzburg only 0 0 at home to Admira Vaca. Is Salzburg now hitting the skids? No. But you know, they have a Champions League uh, game coming up. Uh, the biggest results are the ones on the, on the bottom. Tirol 5 1 against Wolfsburg. You know, Wolfsburg, who, was, who were flying high. I think they had five wins in a row. Absolutely. They were even second place. They caught Sturm Graz. They're losing 5 1 to Tirol, who were uh, close to last place again. Uh, maybe also a little bit underperforming. Un un Tommy Savica, who actually is the cousin of Marcel Savica, but also is a loney from Lusk, scoring goals there. And then Sturm Graz against Lusk, uh, the big name matchup of the round uh, and technically the last game before the lockdown. So there were uh, four and a half thousand people there. Uh, the, pub, the supporters of Graz said we are not going to have any organized support because there are other people suffering. So fine. Uh, the stadium went dead silent for the first half because Lusk did whatever they wanted with Sturm Graz. Gotta give Sturm Graz the credit, they had the first chance uh, through Jeboa, who, this guy is very dangerous, <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, but as soon as there were, you know, there were then, uh, or, or, already a few chances of going on Karamoko, then Grugic after a corner kick, ball falls in front of him and he just yanks it in. Then Karamoko, deflected shot, makes it 2 two in a 30 second, and then a uh, goal of the month at least. Uh, going in a free kick where Howard runs in and he, uh, you know, running away from goal, touches it with his right foot and lobs the goal goalkeeper. Watch the highlights. That's definitely worth watching. This is a, a highlight goal. And at that point, I really thought that Lars can put a route on there because Sturm Graz was not there. However, just before the half, uh, there is a cross come, come, come in that Yebo uh, puts over the line. And, uh, and I was telling, telling my wife at that point, that was not necessary because that let Sturm Graz back into the game. And now how do you manage a two-goal lead? Uh, are you continuing to play like this? And that's exactly what Lask had because Sturm were about to come out uh, full force. And Lask didn't know what to do. They, they couldn't um, finish the counterattacks they had. I think uh, early on in the, sec in the second half, there were a few chances where you could make it a fourth and uh, put the game to rest. But no, it was not to be. Because then a free kick from Sakaria that was not meant to go into goal, uh, from the outside, goes in 
via the uh, post into the net and then the game was on and then I knew this is gonna be really 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 tough uh, and then it was a yellow red unfortunately I was deserved it so uh, they set up another free kick uh, that again uh, Ricky comes with uh, to Ilya Boa puts it in the net 3-3 and at that point I really thought that Lotte is gonna lose this game again did not happen they hung on um, there were actually quite a few chances between the 2-3 and the 3-3 where Sturm could have probably turned, uh, turned around. I think on balance the result was fair, but it felt like a loss uh, for Lusk to me uh, because that would have been a huge win that would have propelled you. Uh, maybe even contention for a playoff spot again. I don't think this is... It's pretty sure that Lusk will not make the championship playoff to me. They will uh, be in the lower one where uh you will see in the stats cast they're actually favored to win that one but uh it is not a good sign to be honest overall um uh, also you know they are not last place uh have a point of alter has a, goal, a game against Sturm in hand uh i think the direction is maybe going in the it's overall going in the right direction maybe but still worried i'm still worried about Lusk, to be honest. Okay, let's move over to Germany. I mean, uh, Augsburg, Bayern. It, it was a complete stunner. I mean, uh, Bayern had a lot of pressure uh, in the first 50 minutes, and then Augsburg uh, just scored two uh, because, because they could uh, evade the pressure, and then a large car contract that attacks themselves, and Peterson and Hahn make it 2 0. Lewandowski just after this 2-0 uh, pulls one back to make it 2-1 two, two, but then Augsburg almost um, it was almost easy for them to see that game out and win it 2-1 yes I mean, Bayern of course had chances but it was not the onslaught that one would expect and so uh, this loss opened up the door for Dortmund oh, who had their troubles coming back in I mean uh, they controlled over Stuttgart the Stuttgart team that is uh, also really worrisome and might get into relegation trouble. You know, they had this great uh, season where they came back from promotion last season and then m most of their big players were uh, sold, sold on, like a, their goalie was sold to Dortmund, so they cannot find it. A find, find in. Dortmund controlled most of the first half. Uh, Stuttgart only had so-and-so chances. Daniel Mal in the second half Gives them the lead. It was a deflected shot. Um, however, Massimo, right uh, a few minutes later, gets the equalizer. But then again, a, that was probably the nicest um, attack of the entire and entire game. Then in the 85th minute, it was a corner for Stuttgart. Stuttgart actually going for 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 the win, which tells you a lot. And uh, on the goal for uh, Massimo, I also have to say the way Homos was defending. That just tells me if Bayern is coming and they are on their game, which they will be, uh, there is no chance that Bayern is not winning that one easily. But the counter-attack that came from, from the corner over Bellingham uh, was really nicely played. And then in the end, Royce does it off, uh, make it 2-2-1. Two, 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 but uh, again, the fact that on a Stuttgart corner, Dortmund is scoring. Um, yes, Dortmund won all the home games so far. They just don't look like the challenges they probably should be. Uh, Leipzig losing to Hoffenheim, big one. Uh, the Berlin Derby, 2-0 was flattering to Hertha. Yes, they had, when it was 2-2-0, a goal by Pekarik this lot because there was an offside uh, in the build-up. But Avani and Trimmel uh, scored the goals in the first half, and this was every bit of 2-0. It could have been 3 or 4-0. Union Berlin, tiny Union Berlin is dominating Hertha Berlin. That, to me, is pretty remarkable to see. As for yesterday's game, I was actually quite, quite, quite a big one uh, when you think about it. Uh, Freiburg in third place, playing at home to Frankfurt, the Frankfurt team that really did not get going all the, all the, all the well. I saw most of the first half of that one, uh, where initially Freiburg had a little bit more of the, of, of the game, but then Kamada kind of took over. Um, and exactly when Frankfurt kind of uh, found their next gear. Uh, Linz, uh, the ball is played to Lindstrom, who uh, makes his first Bundesliga goal. And then Frankfurt was in control of that game. Uh, however, the second goal was a little bit of a fluke because uh, it was a free kick from Kostic that was meant to find someone, but the only thing it found was the net. 
and so it's 2 0 and Frankfurt get another big win. Uh, Frankfurt is a little bit of an odd team because they have away wins to Freiburg and to Bayern. However, elsewhere they're not performing all that well. And then the late game between Mainz and Köln, also a little bit flattering 1 1 from Mainz, although they were at home. I mean, they took the lead, but uh, Köln was largely the better, better team. Get the equalizer to Erdogan, um, but then at the end could not find the gear to really break Mainz down. I I saw the uh, you know the last half hour and was you could see there's nothing happening uh, much. Although Colin controlled it mostly, there were no real chances. So yeah, that was it from me from the Bundesliga. Uh, let me know what you thought about uh, the games happening there. Um, if you saw anything, uh, and if you want to add on anything, please drop a line below. Drop this video, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.